Lily and I run my own small business called Lily's Loaf in South London. So welcome back everyone. It's Monday morning here um, and I thought I'd just start a new weekly video. I don't know if it'll be like a whole weekly vlog but I just kind of feel like I'm in the mood to film a few bits here and there today. So today's a prep day. I've had the whole weekend off which was so nice. I had a barbecue with my family, um, like a few of my family who came over from Ireland um, and then I saw my friends yesterday so I'm feeling very fresh and rejuvenated um, after a whole weekend off which is so nice. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Um, so today I've got prep to do. I'm currently waiting on a couple of my wholesale clients to send through their orders. Um, ideally I like them to be sent through Sunday evening because then I can start work really early on Monday morning um, but I still need to wait on their orders um, before I can start prep properly. Um, I've also got like a couple other things to do just like make more cookie dough um, so that I'm prepared for the week ahead and that's something that I just store in the freezer um, and I'm also gearing up for August time um, because I have been summoned for jury service um, so it's put a bit of a massive spanner in the works but also it's kind of like a weird blessing in disguise because when you're running your own business I don't know if any of you guys will feel like this too or if you're self-employed feel like you always in the back of your mind you well for me I know that I don't really give myself that much permission to stop or like take a break or pause or go away on holiday, especially in these first couple years that I've been running. Um, so what this has meant is I've just decided to close my business temporarily for the whole of August. Um, Jury service starts in like the second part of August, um, so I've decided, I I booked last weekend when I wasn't very well, I booked myself a holiday for the first week of August to um, Puglia in like the south of Italy and I am so excited, I can't wait, haven't been abroad in like three plus years maybe uh, since Covid. Um, I went to, obviously I went to Ireland, which was amazing, and where else have I been? Wales, last summer, um, but I haven't been abroad for ages, so I'm so excited, and yeah, I'm just going for a week, staying in like a little Airbnb, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna do like little day trips to the coast, to like some national parks for hiking, um, hopefully go on like an olive oil tasting tour, go to like beautiful groves, um, speak a little bit of Italian. Um, yeah, I am honestly like so excited. So yeah, I am just, I am absolutely delighted and I just can't wait to go and have some time, some perspective. Um, I'm gonna focus on my photography, bring loads of books. Um, just like wander for hours, like it's just one of my favourite places ever and um, yeah I just can't wait. So that is the plan for August really. Just this past weekend gone actually, I did a new event with one of my wholesale clients, Forty Acre Forest Coffee Roasters um, and they are doing these new events called Walk and Talk Movements um, and it's put on by Merton Council and it's a chance to kind of connect with local neighbours in a green space and get to know one another and kind of like a well-being event um, that's going to happen every Saturday actually. So I was catering for that event uh, and it went really well like we weren't really sure how many people were going to turn up but it, it went like the food went within minutes and it was a big success so yeah I've got to speak a bit more um with Sam just to see like how every single item went but yeah I, it was just it was such a nice like little different thing to do and what I'm loving about 
being a small business is I'm learning on this small scale but then I can apply that on a bigger scale as I grow and even just like trialing these new little items which I hope to offer in my bakery cafe one day um, like really hearty good food like birch muesli porridge as well as your bakery items um, and obviously like lovely fresh coffee so it's just really cool to see kind of what works on this small scale yeah I'll catch up soon hey guys so it's a bit later on now and I just wanted to show you a new product that I'm developing um, so you might have seen a few weeks ago I was trying out these new like protein bars for one of my wholesale clients for 40 acre forest coffee um, and they're good but I kind of I'm going more for the baked version instead of just a chilled vibe because they were just a little bit too crumbly so um, I'm trying this out today so we've got oats in here we've got some oat flour too because I just didn't have enough jumbo oats um, I've also got some linseed, some pumpkin seeds, some light brown sugar and some syrup and sunflower oil. Um, so yeah, that's it. And the idea is that like whoever comes to the stool, they get, they get one of these bars and they've got good energy for a few hours, um, in the morning. So yeah, it's just like, I kind of base things off like what I would like as a customer um, and I know that this sort of thing would like keep me going for a few hours so yeah I think that's it's a really nice thing so yeah gonna give this a go and see how they turn out So my first set of um, flapjacks that I made yesterday did not work. Um, I will show you right here. Um, so, I mean, they don't look terrible, but first of all, they're too thin. Like, that is not a fun flapjack to be having. And then the, you see they're just too soft. They're actually breaking before 
my eyes. <laughs> um, and I think where I went wrong was I just didn't have enough like normal jumbo oats. Um, I had to use like pinhead oats because I only had like a third of what I needed of normal oats and then I used some oat flour as well so I think they're just like way too saturated and they didn't the oats in there just didn't absorb all, all the liquid um, like when I took them out they were a bubbling mess so yeah like I can't sell that so I'm gonna have to find a different way of kind of uh, doing something with them um, but what I'm doing here is I went out and I got some jumbo oats and I got some rolled oats so the combination of the two should give like the best of both worlds I'm hoping and should soak up a bit more of the um, the liquid this time um, but yeah the rolled should give a nice like firm texture um, and kind of like a nice chewy bite whereas the rolled should give it like a little, you know, knobbly, bit more substantial something else in there. Um, so yeah, quite happy. And then I've also added in some linseed, some pumpkin seeds like last time too. So yeah, fingers crossed. Eek. And then I've also got my bread on the go here and I've also got morning buns to roll out. So yeah, very busy this morning. Ta -da. So here they are, out the oven. They look pretty good to me, nice and um, golden. I think, personally, I would like them to be a bit thicker next time, but very happy with that bake. I just need to slice them up now and get them into the boxes here um, for my clients. So yeah, and then I've got my lovely loaves there, and then morning buns here. Yeah, gotta go, in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! <laughs> hey guys, so it's a bit later on now. All the deliveries are done. Um, they were done by 11 o'clock today, so that's pretty good. Started at half seven. And yeah, all done and with our customers, which is great. Um, so it was a bit of a quiet today just um, because some people have already started their summer holidays um, and I guess it's just it's all part of it really all part of working in hospitality like there'll be times when it'll be crazy crazy busy which it was a couple weeks ago and then there'll be times especially over the summer when people are away on holiday where it will be quieter so everything that I was talking to you about yesterday about um, closing down for August and it just so happens to coincide in a typically quieter period for I, for a lot of bakers I think. Um, I know this especially with the other RM2020 owners 
um, they're kind of gearing up for a quieter period and some of them actually take a month off to to go away with their families and everything like that so yeah it's kind of weirdly happened at a kind of good time. I wanted to share something with you because I've been so inspired so ever since I went to the wild farm farm a couple weeks ago um, I've really been learning more and more about the importance of regenerative farming and I mean in my mind now that I know it now that I've seen it and the effects of what mono monoculture farming is doing for the planet I feel I can't really turn back and I'm kind of I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole and um, I've been doing like lots of research in like podcasts and weirdly um, one of our family friends who's a chef she sent this podcast to me um, which was on BBC Sounds and it was all about um, regenerative farming and bread and like sustainable bread and they were focusing a lot of the program on a woman called Kimberly Bell who opened up a bakery in Nottingham and it is it's called Small Food Bakery and let me just get this right hang on because I've been so inspired by it so in her own words Small Food Bakery is a journey to try and build a localised non-commodity food system, perhaps masquerading as a bakery. Um, so basically, what I understand from that is, and what I understand from the podcast that I listened, um, basically they make everything in-house and they work with farmers, they work really closely with farmers and millers and they know exactly where all of the food and ingredients that they're buying is coming from and so they're creating a very short food chain from literally from the fields to the miller to their bakery and that I think is a really beautiful thing and it's seeming to me to be more and more essential as a way of living and a way of running my business and I'm just feeling so inspired by it and it's really made me question every single decision that I'm going to take in the future and slowly slowly trying to kind of reimagine my own menu and becoming self-reliant on things like like the the yeasts that I make in my sourdough instead of relying on like industrial yeast and industrial made vegan butter um, I don't know how far I'm going to be able to go with this but I'm going to do my very best to um, to try and source as locally as possible and to forge like new connections with farmers and um, the millers and basically any single supplier that I use as a business owner I want to get to know them and I want to work with the seasons and I want to make sure that the farmers are being paid well and that the land that they're working on is being looked after and is being supported in a sustainable regenerative farming method. Um, it's just it's really open my eyes to like a new way of living and a new challenge as a baker um, and it means that in the future hopefully I'll be using all like local and seasonal products um, that have come from like farmers who are who are doing the right thing basically um, because at this current stage so many of the farms are just kind of abusing the land and abusing the fields and the wheat and something that I learned from Kimberly actually in listening to this podcast was the wheat and like the cereals they're the creme de la creme for the for the farmers and a lot of the time if you're growing in a regenerative system you have to plant other plants like beans all sorts of different types of beans and legumes to support the cereal crops as well 
Um, so it is kind of your duty as a baker or like a chef to help those farmers out as much as possible and to kind of buy their their bean crops as well as the wheat crops because they'll I think I think there'll be many more bean crops and there will be wheat crops basically um so yeah I mean this place is just it's so beautiful so inspirational and they run it out of an old school I think um yeah, it's it's an open plan kitchen in a in an old school turned art centre in the in Nottingham. And it's so weird because that's where I went to uni. Um and I literally lived in the same area, but I think it only opened um after I left, or at least when I was there, I had no idea that it was there, otherwise I would have absolutely loved it. Um so hopefully I'll visit there one day. Um I think why this is becoming so important to me is simply I mean before the farm visit I had some idea of sustainable living and eating within the seasons and cooking within the seasons and supporting local producers but not to this level and not to how much it actually is impacting the planet and um, I mean our own health really because I read something the other day where whatever we're doing to the crops whatever we're doing to the soil we're doing to our own health so if we're like pumping the soil with full of pesticides full of all this crap we're pumping our bodies with that too and that's not good for anyone um, so it's kind of my mission now to really think everything through and think about the food that I want to be producing and to get to a stage where I'm really really proud of everything that I'm making in my micro bakery and then eventually in my bakery and to have a team where we can welcome all this fresh produce and like always stay on our toes because I think that's the most exciting thing like when you you don't really know if something's going to work but then it might and you might be presented with like a new vegetable or a new fruit or a new bean and you have to figure out a certain way to use it because that is the most seasonal, the most fresh and it means that the farmers are being supported too for other crops that they're growing so yeah it's really um, opened my eyes to a new way of being and obviously not going to be perfect to begin with but I'm going to try my very best and like I'm already kind of getting in touch with new brands and I've made the decision today to go 100% wild farm so I'm making that transition to using their regenerative flour um, because currently I am only using it for one loaf but now I've moved 100% um, well, I'm moving 100% to, to their flower because I just want to be part of that and I want to um, really support what they're doing and support the farmers, support wild farms, support the millers um, and share it with my customers because I know like it's every single link is so important. And yeah, that's kind of it really. I mean, I could ramble on and on and I've got so much to learn and I'm sorry if I've got certain details wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm just at the very beginning of this regenerative journey, I guess, and um, trying to forge like new relationships with like as many suppliers as possible. Um, so yeah, I hope you found it interesting guys, um, I definitely look into like the importance of regenerative farming and how it really is the future um, and how we can really nourish the planet that we live on and um, nourish ourselves as well. So yeah, that's kind of my ramble for the day.
Um, if you're in Nottingham, definitely check out Small Food Bakery. It looks absolutely beautiful and such a kind of, um, it feels very, like, proud might not be the right word, but it feels um, very, like, integrous. Is that the right word? Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you're all well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you liked it. And yeah, let your friends know about Lily's Loaf if they're into baking and like all this sort of stuff. So yeah, thank you so much guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye.